So welcome ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to today's video. I know I've been absent over the last few days after Friday's stream, by the way, which was kind of funny. No, it was entertaining, to be honest. I enjoyed Friday night stream. I did get a little bit carried away, folks. I drank way too much whiskey. I paid the price in the morning. Let me tell you that much. I literally passed out on the couch after I streamed. And that was that. And here we are. I haven't, I haven't been awake for four days. No, obviously I have. But I've been busy, folks. I was closing for a house, officially a homeowner. So that's fun because the bills now are going to be crazy. Um, but yeah, we are going to be back with some videos again. We're going to be back to Master League hopefully tomorrow. Then we'll get back to Dream Team as well. I would like to stream again on Friday, just not go crazy. Or they do have Sangria or some Sangria actually lined up for some action. Uh, but today... We're going to talk about goals, all right? Now, because this has kind of been sitting on the old back burner, we haven't discussed much about goals because we've got UFL, we've got eFootball, and we've got FIFA. And then you've got goals sort of sitting in the background. Now, UFL, more than likely, folks, is going to be postponed a little bit. What with happening, you know, what with what's happening in Ukraine and all that, I would expect the game to be delayed. But with goals, they've they've updated the website a little bit, so I kind of wanted to go through it. It's not going to be a super long video, but maybe you guys are wondering, what is this goals game? You know, is it going to be more of a sim or is it going to be more arcadey? Well, we'll answer that because they're pretty much telling you straight off the bat what this game's going to be. So there is a trailer, and I'm sure that most of you have probably seen this by now. It's It's nothing you know, ridiculous. It just says free to play, which is the way you're all going. Cross play, so you can play together. There's a big emphasis on this game about Master League. Play and earn, that's the, the kind of difference with this game. Uh, you've got eSports ready, easy to learn, and a lifetime to master. Uh, multiplayer first, so that's what they're focusing on. Not a whole lot of single player games out there, folks. And now that, that's the shameful thing. Like, single player games just seem to have gone. You know, it's all about making the revenue online. And I can understand it to a point, but, you know, are, are you kind of ditching the old school players like myself that, that like to play offline? And then that was pretty much it. There was nothing substantial, no gameplay show, nothing like that. So that's just to kind of refresh you guys' memory. Uh, in case you were wondering and if you kind of look at the website itself it's nice you know it's got a lot of motion and it's very red just like eFootball went for the blue and the yellow uh, looks like goals is going for the red so as you can tell from the the, the get-go right recognizing there wasn't a fast paced straight off the bat there's the wording for you fast paced competitive multiplayer focused football game on the market where I'm pretty sure FIFA covers that. I mean, FIFA now is a multiplayer focused game. I mean, it's got foot. I mean, I know it's got career mode, but it still ultimately is a massive online game. Uh, we decided to change that, bridging the gap between the real world and the digital. We're building something that is more than a game. Brilliant. So there you go, moving down. And then this is also kind of the difference with goals uh, that every asset will be, will be fully owned by the player uh, and can be traded freely on an open marketplace. The choice will be easy when comparing goals to other football games. Experience better gameplay and get rewarded for your for your time. Play and own. So that's the interesting thing. I don't know exactly how that's going to work, that you kind of own and trade your own stuff. But that's the whole point. We'll figure that stuff out. And then you've got just a selection of the ball. I mean, I'm guessing this is stuff you can own. I, I don't know. Once again, we need a little bit more information regarding that point. Uh, and then you've got the game design reveal. Right. So, first of all, it's a triple A free to play football game, as we know. Right. Free to play is the new way to play games. You've seen Fortnite kind of started it. Well, I don't know if they started it, but they certainly took off. Uh, and here we are. Efootball's gone free to play. UFL's free to play. Goals is going to be free to play. And I'm pretty sure at some point, FIFA or EA Sports FC, whatever you want to call it, is going to be free to play as well because they make so money off foot. So, with goals, flawless and competitive gameplay will always be the number one priority. There it is, out of the out of the gate. Uh, through the play and own model, all users will be the rightful owner of their assets, which are earned for free through gameplay. By introducing digital ownership in goals, users will all or will will at all times 
uh, be able to sell their assets in an open marketplace for real life money if desired. But it's not real life money, is it? I mean, I don't think you're, you're gambling on this game. Hence, Goals aims to attract players who want a good gameplay experience, compete in a proper esports football title, and truly own their digital assets. And I know, I know before they spoke a lot about like NFTs, but didn't NFTs just not take off? What happened with that? I never bothered with it. So let's move down, right? Gameplay. Let's talk about the gameplay, folks, and what does it mean? So goals will be a fast-paced game. That's the first thing you have to remember, okay? This is not sim. They've already stated they're going for a fast-paced game. Not really a surprise if a lot of them have kind of come from the FIFA scene that stays true to the sport of football. We believe that this is the best way to achieve a large skill gap in a football game while keeping it fun for anybody to pick up and play. I mean... I mean, you can believe that, that's fine, but no, I don't I don't think just because it's arcade, that's the best way to go. You can certainly make a sim and uh, yeah, it may not necessarily cater to everyone, but then again, arcade football isn't going to cater to everyone. So yeah, you got to find a balance. Nevertheless, fully realistic football games come with their challenges, such as poor input responses. Well, we've seen that. Uh, due to advanced realistic animations, which is why they're saying they're not going for the sim approach. We are creating a proper football game, but where there is a need, the gameplay experience will be prioritized over realism. There it is. Which will put a lot of people off, I know. Uh, we will never use any catch-up mechanics, well, we've seen those before, handicaps or similar features, but will instead focus on proper matchmaking to make games engaging. The best gamers should win due to their skills in gameplay and squad management. Nothing else. Alrighty. So I kind of want to go down here and talk about a few things. So let's talk about the game modes, all right? So at Goals, we aim to find a good balance between fun and engaging and competitive and rewarding gameplay. We do not see it as our job to decide for users what they should like. Instead, we aspire to have as few limitations as possible and let the community and game grow in the direction it wants to grow. We want to create an amazing platform with many opportunities for users to put their assets to use, hence providing high utility to them. Uh, a key component of such setting, or such a setting, is the development of a high variety of game modes, all right? Therefore, game modes in goals will range from casual to competitive and solo to co-op. So there's a confirmation of that. Uh, although our plans are grand for game modes in the long term, including user customized game modes, a number of core game modes uh, will be developed for the initial launch of the game. So that's all sort of coming later. But as you can see, they talk about solo and co-op. And then you've got the casual and the competitive. How's that going to work? I mean, it could very well be kind of like how eFootball's doing it right now, where you've got your solo events online, but you've also got your multiplayer events online. I would, look, at the end of the day, I think they've got to incorporate some sort of AI to this game, right? You can't just be playing human, human, human. Like, I would like to play against the AI as well. Maybe I'm not up for it. I'm not, I'm not feeling playing against a human opponent today. But how advanced will the AI be? We'll find out. Uh, and then there's also talk about eSports. I'm not really that bothered about that, so we're going to skip through because there was more stuff here. Uh, okay, so this is what we want to talk about here, the game structure, right? So Goals Club. So this is what initially is going to happen, they said, when you boot up Goals. When a user logs into Goals for the first time, they will be invited to create their own club. So there you go. Straight off the bat, you create your own team and get things going. Users will be walked through the fundamentals of managing the club when it is being created. All clubs will be unique and have different players. Cosmetic stadiums or cosmetics, stadiums, celebrations and more. I don't know how that works. Maybe they're all randomized. Uh, once the club has been created, it is time to start building your goals legacy. By playing different types of game modes ranging from casual to competitive and individual to co-op, users will earn rewards to help them improve their club. Managing and developing a club will challenge users with regards to player transfers, pets, what pets, what's that mean, P-E-T-S? Uh, squad management, roles and tactics, facilities, game performance and more. Some of the assets are 
or some of the assets a club can own are as follows. So here a look of that is good English. So obviously you've got your players, okay? Um, a unique, one-of-a-kind players that are exclusive for your club. Uh, we'll be discussing separately in the next chapter. Uh, you've got cosmetics, right? So the purpose of the cosmetic items is to make players visually, appearancely, I don't know where the words are coming from, even more unique and tailored to the user. This will include shirts, shorts, shoes, socks, and more. So, yeah, everyone's going to have their own unique style. Stadiums. So, users have been playing in the same looking stadiums for decades. Yes, we have. Uh, we want to, especially if you're coming from Pez, called Blimey, we've had the same stadiums for donkey's years. We want to offer some unique looking backgrounds that differ from the typical looking stadiums in order to further enhance the visual user experience and offer a variety within each game in which users participate. That wording is beautiful. Uh, the possibility of playing in classic stadiums will be maintained while providing the opportunity to play in amazing backgrounds, not necessarily associated with football pitches. Interesting. Uh, we aspire to always provide good lighting in all stadiums and pitches, and the visual backgrounds will not affect gameplay in any way. So it's a lot of cosmetic stuff. Uh, you've got highlights, so every single moment that happens on the pitch matters, whether it's a beautiful goal, a last-ditch save, a goal-saving tackle, a fantastic save, or even a funny in-game moment, our aim is to give the users in goals a possibility to save their most memorable moments in the game as highlights. Fully tradable in the marketplace. That's interesting. I don't really know how this marketplace is going to work. I think that's probably one of the most intriguing parts. Then you've got your celebrations. Users should always have the possibility to express their feelings through an abundance of different celebrations in-game, some more unique than others. However, we believe that celebrations should not be too long or too toxic. Yeah, don't rub it in our face. Uh, then you've got trophies. So trophies and goals are provided or are provided to users who have successfully won a league or tournament. Trophies can be used purely as a way to show off your success, but also be used to grant access to certain leagues, tournaments, and organizations. For example, a specific trophy will be required to participate in the Professional Players Association, the PPA, uh, where experienced players will have a say in how the esports scene is developed. Once again, it sounds interesting and intriguing, but I don't really know uh, exactly what else is going to be happening until we get our hands on this game. Uh, and as you scroll down, they're kind of going over a few things. Look at that. You can press a button. Where hey, hey. First owner. Fantastic. So, yeah, then you've got your rewards. So, unique players. Right. So, let's kind of go over this stuff. This is probably the more intriguing and interesting. Um, so, we have the ambition to make every single player in the game unique. And I do like that because I feel like we've lost a lot of that nowadays. Like when we used to play pairs, you could definitely feel the difference in players. If you had Messi or Ronaldo or, you know, the other Ronaldo, R9, or someone like Arjen Robin. Robin was a key player for me. When you had Robin on the ball in pairs back in the day, you knew, you knew you had the Flying Dutchman there at your fingertips. You just felt phenomenal. So it's good to see that they are saying that, you know, well, they're saying it, that every player should be unique. Since we believe that player diversification uh, is an important part of keeping the game exciting. However, we also acknowledge or acknowledge the appeal of being able to relate to real world players when playing a football game. Therefore, we will implement a DNA system, folks, to enable the best of both worlds. Fully unique players with a real world connection. No player will look or perform exactly like another and there will only be one player that is the best in goals. Will it be you? Yes, it will. Or yours. So here you go. You've got your little DNA right here with defending, physicality. Uh, you've got the keeping, dribbling, passing, pace, shooting. That all adds up to the, the DNA of a player. So you've got your player attributes, which are different skill sets that every player in goals will have. There are will there will be six main attributes as we went over the pass, pace, shooting, and etc. Goalkeepers will have their own separate player cards and attributes. Each attribute will also have an underlying in-game attributes to further diversify between different players. Uh, each attribute has a stat value of 1 to 99, so traditional values, determining how skillful a player is in uh, that attribute. 
The stats affect how a player performs in the game, and an increase in stats is exponential. Exponential. Uh, meaning there is a bigger difference in performance between 89 and 90 than there is between 59 and 60. Hmm. So the higher you go up, then the more difference there is. Interesting. So there's the DNA system, which is an essential part of which makes each human being unique. And the same logic while applying goals. A player's DNA will affect their stats and looks. But more importantly, it cannot be replicated. Therefore, every player in goals will be a one of a kind and exclusive to the owner. The DNA that a specific player receives is completely randomized by the engine and consists of two different types of genes. Okay, so I kind of understand now. Basically, when you boot up this game first launch, folks, you're going to have random players that are all completely randomized. Duh. But they've all got their own specific DNA, statistics, look, cosmetic feel and all that with them. And then from there, you'll start trying to grow and develop them. So I can't see this game being like, really, it's not licensed, basically. You're not going to get any. I don't know how the licensing is going to work for that. Obviously, every player in, in the real world is a unique player, right? There's only one Cristiano Ronaldo. There's only one Messi. But it'll be interesting to see how it plays out when you actually get your hands on the game. So then you've got performance genes. Every player in goals will have six different performance genes. One of each attribute performance genes determines players stats in each attribute where the performance genes are influenced by real life players uh, this means that the stats a player receives in a specific attribute are influenced by how good the real life player is was in that area sounds confusing sub attributes to the main attribute are also based on the real life player which means that two players with for example a 90 dribbling uh, can have very different underlying stats depending on which real-life player their stats are based on. Hmm. So now they're talking about real-life players. How does that work? If you guys understand this better than me, which you probably do, of course, leave a comment below. Uh, this gives each attribute similar characteristics to real-life player that their performance uh, gene is based on. Good performance genes will be weighed down, meaning they will be harder to get than lower tier performance genes. Performance genes will be based on both past and present real life players. Okay, and then they've got this here. Dribbling. It looks like a, some sort of a Dutch player. See, this to me, if you look at this, folks, hang on a minute. Where, 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 what's happened there, son? Where's it gone? If you look at this, right, is that Robin? You know what I mean? Because it's got dribbling. It's got AR. That looks like an AR to me. Iron Robin. It's got number 10. Wasn't he number 10 for Netherlands? 2013. He definitely was playing then. And then there's a Dutch flag. And then you've got agility, ball control. And that, that kind of looks like a Robin stat. So it doesn't say his name but i'm wondering if that's what they mean and that makes it a little bit more intriguing okay i don't know it could be completely off but you know trying to figure it out uh, and then you've got the visual genes um, which will determine the unique visual appearance and looks of a player so this includes such as tattoos hairstyle facial traits of the player visual genes are used to create the in-game 3d character as well as the artwork for player cards a 2D version will also be uh, created as a unique profile picture, a PFP uh, version that can be used on social media. Besides the visual genes that are set and cannot be changed, users can customize the visual appearance of their players by using different cosmetics. Cosmetics can be earned from rewards and fully tradable in the marketplace. So it certainly seems like a game that's going to take a little bit of time to get rewards and like perks and start evolving your team i mean that's kind of the purpose uh, the height and weight will not be determined by visual genes but rather but rather by the performance gene for physicality this is necessary to keep the real life connection but also for stats like jumping reach and strength to make sense since those are based on that real life player's body type the strong foot of a player will be based on the performance gene for shooting to keep the real-life uh, relatability intact. So yeah, there's a lot of talk about real life and real-life players, but I haven't seen like any licensing talk at all. 
That's why I'm like, hmm, how does this exactly work? Uh, and they've also got an aging system, which is quite intriguing. Uh, if a user can keep all players forever and just work on developing them each day, uh, eventually they're going to build a super team. Yeah, we've all seen that. Uh, and have a low incentive to keep improving their squad. I understand. Uh, in a scenario like this, the market will be flooded with good players after a while, leading to a very low value for the majority of players. From our experience, the most exciting time in other football games is usually in the early stages of the yearly cycle when squad building incentives are high and there are constant opportunities for upgrades. See, I... I I, I will give them credit. As much as this is going to be like an arcade game, which will make it mm, less of an appeal for me, but the way they are doing this and, and what they're stating here, it does make sense because this is eFootball right now. Everyone's got the top players because you're basically given them. And then it's like, well, now what do you do? Because you don't really want the lower players. Therefore, we will implement an aging system that will strive to keep the game's balance and longevity uh, intact while also challenging the user to make good decisions during a player's career. We believe that the aging system, aside from securing the game's longevity, forces users to build new teams and go through different cycles, which is very similar to what every real football club has to go through. How fast aging will happen in terms of real lifetime is yet to be decided. So there we go. Interesting. Didn't know about that. Uh, and you've also got retired players as well. So to counteract that, I know it's a long video, folks. I, you know, once I start talking, we're off, but we're covering it all here. Uh, to cut to counteract that any uh, bleh, bleh, right rewind that bleh, bleh. right so to counteract that any efforts go to waste uh, and that players lose all their value when they retire all retired players are stored in the club right uh, retired players can be used forever uh, but there is one caveat caveat uh, only a limited amount of retired players can be used in a squad for the official game mode. So special tournaments with customized rules might allow more or fewer retired players in the squad. The reason why we chose or choose to implement a limitation for the number of retired players allowed in the official game modes is twofold. Uh, and then they mentioned that keeping uh, a constant demand for new players to allow earning and maintaining the game's longevity once again uh, and allowing the best players in the game to maintain their value after retirement uh, if no retired players were allowed to be used, the problem would instead be the opposite, etc. They've got their point, so, you know, you can obviously go over that as well. Uh, and as you scroll down, you've also got your pets, which is the player exchange tasks um, for which users can submit a number of players after meeting a specific set of uh, squad requirements uh, and receive a reward in turn. So pets will be viable, will be a viable tool for keeping player inflation in check while simultaneously providing flesh or flesh fresh uh, and engaging content for users on a regular basis pets can also be used to give a specific set of players base value a couple of use cases where this could be interest for example uh, pets could be potentially a loophole to get better first owner players by submitting players that have been bought on the market well it's very confusing folks and then you know there's a little bit more um, there isn't really too much after this. And then there also is going to be like user generated content, which is going to be quite intriguing. Um, therefore, users in goals will be able to design their own stadiums, backgrounds, kits and cosmetics. They can send these concepts to the development team uh, as art proposals. Hmm. If deemed desirable, uh, these art proposals will be included as items that can be earned as rewards in the game. Interesting. And then there we have it. Beautiful. So that's pretty much what I wanted to cover. The main thing was ideally, obviously this is a look at some of the kits or one of the kits, is just going over this game in a little bit more detail. And honestly, they've updated the website quite a bit. There was a lot of text, you know, and some buttons to press, which is always good fun. So there's a lot of text to go over. Um, but I think kind of going by what they're saying they've done their homework you know they've certainly thought about the process of trying to not make things stale online which can happen very very fast but first and foremost you know we want to see the gameplay ultimately we want to see how is this game going to play i know it's going to be fast but is it going to be super fast is it going to have no real level of realism at all or is it going to be a little bit of a mixture 
I don't know. But I do like the sound of some of the things they're doing. Specifically kind of having to to keep freshening up your freshening up your team as opposed to just buying the best players, buying the best players, and that's it. The aging thing is quite intriguing as well. And then like owning your own assets and then you can sell them on a marketplace as well is something we haven't really seen before in a football game. So yeah, I'm, I'm quite intrigued to see how this is going to fare. There's a lot more other articles as well. I'll leave the link, of course, for the website in the description. But I would say that this game, you know, it doesn't... It looks like it could be, a, you know, some potential there. Definitely could be some potential for us to, to give this a go. But time will tell. I, I'm, I don't know when the gameplay is coming out. Hopefully at some point. Uh, but they have definitely updated the website. They're starting to put more stuff out there. And I'm sure within the next few months, they, they may even show something. Maybe E3. I don't know. That's next month. That would be nice. Uh, but anyway, let me know your thoughts below. We will return. Ladies and gents, for some Master League, hopefully tomorrow. I did want to record some, but I haven't had time because I've just been closing on the house. And yeah, it's going to be a crazy few months. Well, I've got a month to move into the new gaff. Once everything's set up, then it's going to be easy. I don't have to worry about too much. I can just sit down, record, get the videos going again. And there we are. But anyway, we'll be back shortly. Friday, I want to stream again. I really have enjoyed Friday night streams. I mean, I won't get too drunk this time. It's a little bit crazy. Uh, but yeah, stay tuned for that. We'll be back shortly. Let me know your thoughts as well. Always intrigued. But until next time, subscribe for more. Take care.